Question number five, what, is, what are the structures of the two esters? So both esters have the same molecular formula, C5H10O2. They both have an HDI of one, and they're esters, so we know that that HDI, that one, comes from the carbonyl, the C double bond O. Um, I think the first thing to do here is to look at the step curves on both of these spectra and determine the relative number of protons, and I've done that already on um, on a piece of paper, I took a ruler out and I measured all of the step curves on the first spectrum and I found the ratio was 3 to 2 to 3 to 2. So that makes sense because if you have 2 protons plus 3 plus 2 plus 3, that gives you a total of 10 protons. So I could just write that in there. Right away I know how many protons are represented by each of these peaks. And for the spectrum on the on the bottom, I did the same exercise, and I determined that the step curve here represents six protons. This one represents two protons, and this last one here, the most deshielded one, represents one proton. I think the next thing um, that's pretty noticeable about these two spectra is this big signal here. So this is the signal shown down here, but it's very small. So this is an expansion, and you can see that this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a septet. So we have a septet here, and we also have a doublet. So that tells us that we probably have an isopropyl group. So we could write that down. We probably have an isopropyl. And if you think about the septet, it is so far deshielded. It has a chemical shift of all oh, around just below five parts per million, I guess. So I mean, the only way that you could get the CH from the isopropyl group, the only way you could get it that deshielded would be to have it next to the oxygen. Okay, so if I put it here next to the oxygen from the ester. So if I had something like this. Because if you remember um, when we looked at estimating chemical shifts for protons, so this proton here, that methine, how would we determine that? We'd say, well, a methine, we start with 1.7, and since it's next to an oxygen from an ester, we would add 3, which would give us 4.7 ppm, which is very close to the chemical shift that we see in the spectrum. Also, each one of these methyl groups here, they're chemically equivalent. Um, the estimated chemical shift for those would be 0 0.9 plus 1 fifth of 3, which would be 0 0.9 plus 0 0.6 which would give us one and a half ppm, and you can see that that is very close. It's almost right on one and a half, the doublet that we would get for those two methyl groups. Lastly, the, the methyl group here that's um, attached directly to the carbonyl, so how would we estimate the chemical shift for that? Well, we'd say 0 0.9, and since it's next to a carbonyl, we simply add one, so it would be around 1.9 parts per million. And that makes sense with the chemical shift for the singlet that we see here um, for uh, uh, three protons. Sorry, this should be three protons. Um, anyhow, so uh, we can see that that chemical shift would be 1.9. And again, the chemical shift here is at 2 ppm, or roughly 1.9. So that matches the structure for, or this should be, the, or this is the structure or the compound on the bottom. The compound on the top, not quite as simple, I don't think, but you can see that we have two protons that are highly deshielded, and they're split as a triplet, so that must be a CH2, okay? So that must be a CH2 that is directly attached to another CH2. And those two protons are so far deshielded, they're at four parts per million, those must be the ones that are attached directly to the oxygen of the ester like that. So right away we can see that we must have this uh, portion or this piece for our molecule. Also we see a, tr a singlet here that integrates for three protons and if we put our methyl group over here the estimated chemical shift for that methyl group would be 1.9 ppm just like it was in the last case and that makes sense because the chemical shift is just over two just a little bit above it so that seems pretty close. Um, so we have one more carbon atom and three more protons to go, and the only place that we could put them in the molecule would be here, like this. And those three protons would be represented by this triplet down here because they're split by the two methylene protons here. 
Lastly, and I'm going to get out the blue pen here for a second. So lastly, these two protons here are split by one, two, three, four, five protons. So we have five plus one. So you can see here that this looks like a sextet. You see one, two, three, four, five, six protons. So that makes sense according to the n plus one rule. And the chemical shift of those protons should be 1.2 plus one fifth of three. So that would be 1.2 plus um, 0.6. So that would give us around 1.8. So you can see that it's, it's right around the 1.8 neighborhood. So there we go. We've elucidated the structures of the two isomeric esters.